What's going on, guys? How are we doing? Checking out some John Anderson band geeks. Yes. Heart of the Sunrise. Live. June. Wow. Uh, people had told me there are some people in the comments that were saying you should check out John Anderson band geeks, right? And band geeks. So I found this clip. It looks, you know, just in my pursuit of you know, after the last video that I just recorded, which was the live, yes, Sound Chaser QPR 75 audio quality. <laughs> I'm like, let me let me uh, check out some other things. And I found this and I was like, you know what? This, you know, this is from today, basically. This is probably good quality. I mean, it looks like it's filmed like an audience member, but it looks good. So we'll we'll see. We'll see if it's cool. And this is Heart of the Sunrise because it's been a minute and this is such a good, this is such a good song. I love this song. Love this song. All right, let's get to it. John Anderson and Band Geeks, Heart of the Sunrise, Albany, 6624. Let's do it. Bam. <laughs> Two keyboardists. Guys got a Rickenbacker. Sounds I mean, it's a Rickenbacker, right? Sounds legit. Giving it to the bass player. I mean, sounds legit. Yeah, that was great. Yep. Solid. back there so they got these light arrays back there and then these screens it's like projector or something we can just take it with them a couple of risers
Did they lower the key? Doesn't sound like it. They sound legit. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's going on with the two keyboardists? They got two going on? Like they weren't sure. Thank you. 
Crazy, crazy, crazy. They sound great. They sound great. Can't be mad at it. They sound great. John Anderson. I mean, that's the original key. Come on. All these people that are that that have hit me on videos of past about singers and you know dropping keys and losing voices and not being the same and this, that, and the other thing. This motherfucker over here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's not everybody. And, you know, I and I remember in those conversations, I we haven't had these conversations in a long time. And I think it was mostly because of uh, Getty Lee. It's all the Rush people. Hey, well, the masters here. You know where Rush got it from. Masters for a reason, I guess. Huh? <laughs> all right. I'm digging now a bit. I'm digging now a bit. Yeah, maybe my own grave, but maybe more what I mean. I'm, Digging you guys a bit, you know. Anyways, sounds fantastic, just fantastic. Oh yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that I, I remember watching J- Justin Hawkins rise again and him talking about it in terms of like people's voice. And he's a vocal, right? He's a legit vocalist. I'm not a, a legit vocalist. I'm just a musician that has worked with a lot of amazing vocalists and what. And I love vocalists. I love singing and all that. So like, just gleaning as much as I can off of people that are legit vocalists and him talking about, you know, it's, it's almost like it's the luck of the draw. You know, it's like no different. You don't know when your time is done. You could be super healthy and you go early and you could not be in, you live forever, you know, type of thing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's that type of pulling of straws. And some people still got their voice. Or, or a lot of it or, you know, that type of thing as they age and other people like it just gets lower and 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 they, they lose that range. If they, they sang high before all that type of thing. Yeah, John Anderson sounds great, though. I'm like, hey, man, you sound great. You sound great. I would I, good for him. Good for him. The band sounds great. The bass player sounds great. Everybody sounds this is totally legit. I mean, I'm curious about the two keyboard players, but it's not like they sound bad. You know, it's nothing like that. It's more just a question like, hey, what's going on? Why do you have two keyboard players as opposed to one keyboard player with both sets of keyboards? So with a zillion keyboards? I mean, it's, it's whatever. Nitpicking, obviously. Yeah, it looks like a nice little setup. 
All right, so John Anderson is playing 70s Yes Classics again with a band he found on YouTube. Discovered Richie Castellano and his buddies online, taking them on the road. Summer of 2018, Richie Castellano and his buddies posted a remarkable cover of the 1972 Yes epic, Close to the Edge. Half a million views. Blown away by these comments. Isn't it a bunch of music snobs showing off this genuine love for Yes and their music? Hardcore Yes fans, this video is not about conquering a song or doing it better than anyone. Joy, joy of indulging our inner teenagers and being lucky enough to get the opportunity to play our favorite music. Multi-instrumentalist and Blue Oyster Cult for the past two decades. Oh, wow. Close to Edge were just a fun way for him to spend time between commitments. John Anderson saw it, was in need of a new band. They were quite amazing and they looked happy and fun. Wow, I'll never get a gig over that. <laughs> <laughs> looking happy and fun oh boy that's not it's not all all about that anyways uh, i phoned up richie the bass player and said let's go on tour he said what <laughs> hey let's go on tour what i actually am fun i'm just not happy <laughs> it depends actually uh it fully depends tour wasn't able to you guys see me i joke around here constantly it's like half of what the channel is, is me joking tour wasn't able to take place until 2023, COVID, Anderson's other obligations, part of the sunrise, yours is no disgrace, awaken. I can't even wrap my head around all of this, says Castellano. I used to go watch Giant Concert and scream at him. <laughs> you know, to do something like this is just a dream. It's also been an opportunity as a Yes fan to go, okay, we've been handed the keys to the kingdom. We have John Anderson singing for us. How do we want this to go? See, he understands it's a kingdom. It's like a fantasy, like fairy tale land. Right. Because John Anderson is in it and John Anderson brings his his jangly shells and his flutes and whistles. John Anderson. Makes sense. Tesla learned about the kingdom of yes. <laughs> a kingdom of yes. I'm at least glad they're going with it. At age 14, when his uncle Phil handed him a copy of Fragile, he challenged me to learn hard the sunrise. And so I tried it and now I realized, oh, this is way beyond me musically. Yeah, I don't understand what's happening here. Once I learned how to do it, I was converted. I was a fan. Saw Yes on the talk tour at Garden State Arts Center in Homedale. I've been there. 1994, Trevor Rabin. Got a job with Blue Oyster Call as their sound engineer. Three years later, journeyman Rudy Sarzo joined the group. Castellano took on a new role as keyboardist. This guy plays multiple instruments. He's played with everybody. Yes, Rudy Sarzo, yeah. They were in the back of the tour van one day when Sarzo asked him if he had his own YouTube channel. He didn't. He said, you're making a big mistake. A guy your age, if you don't have a YouTube channel, you don't exist. Wow. I exist. Hi, guys. <laughs> That's funny. Wait a minute. Does Rudy Sarzo have a YouTube channel? I mean, not that he need. I mean, he kind of like made it in that way but does he i mean you know he's saying stuff like that you would think he has a youtube channel i don't think he does though yeah this guy doesn't have a, a youtube channel oh wait oh oh is this him it says it's him 2018 musician rudy sarzo and this is my podcast the dash is this legit i've never heard of this the dash you know that line between the birth and death day on your headstone that's our life's journey the dash okay yeah wow Fascinated by people of all walks of life who have been touched by the power of music on the dash. I'll be conversing with influential and upcoming members uh, from the entertainment industry, sharing stories of the struggles and successes. OK, that sounds legit, right? From my four decades of recording a touring musician. OK, wow. I mean, it doesn't look like he's active five years ago. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this was a period where podcasts were I mean, podcasts are still huge, but obviously. Um, Joe Rogan still does his thing, but I used to listen to and this will probably give away some of my humor, but I used to listen to Bill Burr's podcast like religiously. I've seen that guy live in L.A. A dozen times, so many times like see him and, and it's always interesting because I I'd see him like a bunch of times in a row and see him like working out the same material. That That's very interesting to see just as somebody that's not a comedian, but likes comedians and likes to laugh and likes to joke around yeah that was very interesting yeah to me he doesn't really have a youtube channel <laughs> he has a podcast that uh he put up on youtube also but he doesn't have a youtube channel anyways 
that's interesting. So he told him to get a YouTube channel. He started a YouTube channel. He started doing these things. Queens Bohemian Rhapsody. It went viral. Started a podcast with his musical buddies he called Band Geek. It didn't long for him to realize that people had far more interest in hearing them play music than just talk about it. We phased the podcast out and we became Band Geek the band. Working alongside a rotating crew of musicians, Castellano tackled songs like Here I Go Again. Oh. In the Cage. Working for the weekend in Heaven and Hell. So like this is like 80s. Whenever they did a Yes song, Soprano vocalist, Amory Nakio, Nachio, Nakio joined. They did Close to the Edge. Okay. Yes, we're divided into warring camps. Steve Howe led Yes with drummer Alan White and uh, Jeff Downs, while Anderson front of the spinoff group, Yes featuring John Anderson, Trevor Rabin, and Rick Wakeman. For reasons that have never been fully articulated, the Anderson, Raven, Wakeman incarnation of the group dissolved in 2018. That was fun. Anderson says there's a story there, but I won't tell it now. Whatever the story is, it ends with Anderson as a man without a band. But the instant he saw Castellano on the band geeks play close to the edge, he saw a path forward. I told Richie I want to go on tour. He goes, John, are you serious? I, I, I said to him, yeah, I want to play Gates of Delirium, Close to the Edge, Awaken, and all the hits of the 70s. We have to do anything like Owner of a Lonely, Lonely Heart. We'll do it at the end. But generally speaking, I want to do the music of, of Yes in the 70s, the best of it. Yeah, because he's a raging hippie, a raging, a raging. He is king of the hippies. And I'm wearing a dead shirt. OK. <laughs> he is among he's he's freaking more hippie than Bob Weir. Is that possible? I think so. I think I just saw it. <laughs> Took a while to sort through logistics, wait for COVID, tour, Blue Oyster Cult tour, did 48 rehearsals for the first tour. 48 rehearsals, my lord. And that was just to get all the parts right. John eventually started watching us via Zoom. He'd be like, oh, in this part, change this, or you sing this part with me. He'd be singing along, even though it was Zoom. It was really awesome. Yeah, wow, incredible. First part was figuring out how to play all 22 minutes of Gates of Delirium. There's this one bass drum and bass guitar pattern with no repeats in it. He says, it's like one long phrase you just have to memorize. Well, yeah, you need to memorize the whole entire concert. I mean, right? Come on. If one of your readers knows what the repeat is, please send it to me because I couldn't find it. I looked. Okay. I eventually had to make up these little mnemonic devices and nursery rhymes just to get that part right. Yeah, I I used to do that, actually. That type of thing. I used to write like that music in that way, just to like remember riffs. Like if I were in, I, I, I'm talking about when I was in high school. If I had something in my head and I was in school, I would do pretty much exactly that. These mnemonic devices, ways of remembering it so you didn't forget it. Um, not having phones now where you can just record it for yourself. Oh, you know, I mean, we had cell phones, but it was we're talking the beginnings of cell phones. Most of those songs were in the Yes Live repertoire for decades, which only complicated matters over time. Songs more of tempos change sections get cut out. What's the right version of Close to the Edge? Right. OK. Anyways, cool. Yeah, I I think they sound awesome. I think they sound awesome. So there it is. This was really cool. I got to say, this is really cool and amazing. Amazing. Don't give up on YouTube. That's what that says. Don't give up on YouTube and, and uh, get get your ass on YouTube. There, That's been a trend lately on YouTube right now. It's like all these like older people, you know, why you should have a YouTube channel in your 40s, why you should have a YouTube channel in your 50s and you're et cetera, you know, pick a decade right there. All that has been going on recently. I haven't watched any of them because I don't care about it, but it's like popped in my feed, you know, where I'm seeing it and seeing multiples of it. All these, you know, like older creators making that stuff. How starting a YouTube channel in my 50s changed my life, et cetera, et cetera, stuff like that. So, I mean, there you go. You know, it's what it is. It's definitely a grind, but, you know, it's what it is. All right. This was super. This is this is great musically. This is fantastic. Band sounds fantastic. John Anderson sounds awesome. Still, come on. I didn't check if the key was different, but I'm betting it's the same. Sounds the same to me. 
Anybody have the answer to that? Sounds the same to me. Anyways, there it is. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Catch you in the next video.